Hello all benders and non-benders and welcome back to Avatar Generations and today we're going to be doing an analysis of Commander Zhao. He's bad. And now let's talk about Giga Chad Zhao, Moonslayer Zhao, our newest firebending chaos character. Um, currently available in the Spirit's Call banner along with Princess Yue. So let's see what this guy has to offer. Interestingly enough, he actually counts as a spirit character as well as a hunter. I guess making some sushi out of the moon spirit will get you those rankings. Good to know. So let's see what he has here. His basic is called Execution. Deals decisive damage to one enemy, gain lifesteal for one turn, this attack cannot be countered, and ignores 50% of the enemy's defense. So lifesteal here, the damage is dealt based on the enemy's missing HP. So if they're already damaged, this attack will do more damage. It's very much meant to be just bam, finisher move. That, that's what we're going for here. And you'll see that once again in his advanced Fatal Flame. Deals decisive damage once again to one enemy. Damage dealt increases by 15% for each debuff on the opponent. This attack cannot be countered and ignores the enemy's defense. All of their defense. So it just, it just doesn't care. You build yourself bulky in defense. This move, and to an extent this move, they just don't care. You'll notice these attacks are focused on a singular goal, which is putting enemies down, and this is why. Spirit Slay, his passive, deals 10% increased damage to spirit faction enemies, steal 20%, and inflict Red Moon on all enemies for two turns. When the caster defeats an enemy, this Red Moon ignores resistance. Now, what is Red Moon? Target takes 15% increased damage, the caster of this effect, that being Moonslayer Zhao, cannot die as long as the Red Moon is active. So let's just make sure that you're aware of how crazy this is. Not only will the enemy be taking more damage, as long as one enemy has the Red Moon debuff on them, Zhao can't die. He will permanently stay alive with one HP no matter what you throw at him as long as this debuff is on an enemy. And keep in mind, while you're trying to get these debuffs gone, either by turns or cleansing the, them, he's gonna be trying to kill someone else from refreshing it. So, you know, that that can get pretty wild in a hurry. Zhao can go from zero to 100 pretty much instantly if he does get a kill. Additionally, we do have some skill mastery levels here. At mastery level two, gain a random offensive buff for one turn when the caster gains lifesteal. So whenever he uses his basic here, not only will he get the lifesteal, he's going to get another buff as well. Master level three here, lower the attack of all enemies by 25% for two turns when the caster defeats an enemy. So not only is he getting that red moon thrown around, but he's also helping his own team by lowering the attack power of the enemy, making it so that the whole team can stay alive longer. And then at Master Level 4 here, permanently increase attack and crit damage by 15% for each Red Moon effect that gets applied to the enemy. That can go nuts in a hurry. If Zhao kills the first person on the enemy team and there's three others, you're applying three Red Moons. That's 45% to attack and crit damage. That can go nuts. And again, if he kills somebody else, even more. If he kills another person, even more. The sky is the limit on this Master Level 4, and he can do some damage in a hurry. So talking about kind of his, his um, whether you want to spend skill tokens on him, he is extremely good at base if you're using him in offensive arena. In PvE, he has very little trouble. Um, the defense on the enemy in PvE is not as crazy, but all you gotta do is take down one enemy and the Red Moon gets spread around and he will do his job and do it well. In arena, if you're controlling him at base, he can do great on offense. On defense, it can be a little twitchy. Um, if you do really want to run 
Zhao on defense, you might want to invest in getting him to at least level four. This makes the Red Moon um, last for three turns. And if you really want to go whole hog on him, then two more will get you to level six. And of course, increase the attack as well as making Red Moon last for four turns. And in arena battles, four turns might as well be an eternity. If you don't got a Kelsong or somebody to cleanse that, or maybe he's still on cooldown with his with his Guardian Stance ability, this can end the battle for you. It has for me. I have had a Zhao sweep my entire team before. So just kind of something to keep in mind. If you're not too worried about having Zhao on defense, he can work great in offensive arena. And of course, he's a powerhouse in PvE. If you're working on, on the defensive arena team, a higher level Zhao might serve you a little bit better. But let's talk about how to build him because there are a few ways you can do it. You pretty much want as much attack as humanly possible because he really has no problem granting himself crit damage, especially with his master level 4 when he starts getting kills. However, you can throw in crit damage as well and any other parts you might have. Like what I've done here is I did give him a two set of immunity. It's actually not that bad of an idea to give him some immunity for that one turn, just to make sure he can get the ball rolling. Um, but also, I do have the very good attack stat here. So, kind of keep in mind what you have available, but you probably want to go for at least a four set of attack, and then maybe mix in either some more attack, or... You can do lifesteal, but he kind of already grants himself lifesteal, so that's not really a priority. So just kind of work with the parts you've got. Make sure that you do have just hyper-offensive arts here so that he can do as much damage and get those red moons out there. Of course, supports, the standard stuff for firebenders, probably the Komodo Rhino is going to get the job done. I don't know if there's even any other supports he can use, so Komodo Rhino, that's where you're going to go. The nice thing is this does have... A, the attack stat on it, so just make him do even more damage. Now, for his relics, he very, very recently got an actual ton of good options that we're going to talk about here. Of course, his signature here is Hidden Library. This one will actually just straight up increase his crit chance, which makes him extremely easy to build with the arts, by the way. Um, and permanently decreases the defense of all enemies when the caster defeats an enemy. So not only are you um, getting that red moon spread around, but you're permanently nuking, or not permanently. No, that is, that is permanent, actually. It's not two turns. It is permanent. Permanently decreasing their defense. It's a little counterintuitive for him because he kind of does ignore most defense anyway, but that's a great um, helper effect for... Um, Zhao's allies. That can make sure that his allies are doing more damage as well. And of course, if you're fighting someone like Kiyoshi who scales on defense, that can make it so that they do less damage. I also do want to talk about um, Yue's relic, actually, that was also on the banner. As a spirit requirement relic, he actually can use this. Um... Caster heals all allies by 15%, grants 15% increased turn bar, and increased attack to all allies for two turns upon death. It's not the most intuitive thing for him. It doesn't really play to his strengths. However, if your Zhao did meet an unfortunate end early on in the fight, and you want to make it so that his death doesn't just totally cripple your team, this is actually not a worthless option. This relic is very good. 50% turn bar is nothing to sneeze at, and he does get the give the healing and the attack as well if he had this relic equipped. Just kind of something to keep in mind there. Like I said, it's kind of counterintuitive for him, but it's not worthless. However, let's say that five-star relics were not in your corner. Don't worry, we have got a shocking number of brand new relic options, the vast majority of which are truly fantastic for him. Um, first, let's talk about the Tundra Tank. This was a new 4-star relic that was added in the same banner that he was released. It works on Hunters, um, reduces damage taken by, at this particular tier, 48%. I've got it at tier 3 right now. Um, for the first two turns of battle, so basically gives a massive damage reduction for the first two turns 
and then reduces damage taken by 30% after the first two turns. So you're always going to have at least 30% damage reduction. The point of this relic is to make sure Zhao sticks around, because obviously he can't get kills if he's dead, and he does not have any intrinsic death save abilities. So you do want to make sure that he is staying alive if he's in the back line, if he's getting hit by like AoEs, or maybe if you can put him on one of the sides. This can make sure he's not meeting an early death. But if maybe you didn't get a whole lot of these, we actually recently got some free to play options. I first want to talk about the sheer shoe darts. This you can get in the timeline store. The only timeline we have right now is Rise of Kiyoshi, but you can spend the timeline currency to get the sheer shoe darts. 60% chance to inflict restrict on up to two enemies for one turn. This ignores resistance. If the enemy has a debuff when the caster attacks on their turn. Just a reminder that Restrict reduces the enemy's defense and resistance by 65%. That also does remind me, though, kind of going back to the arts here, um, I would recommend probably building his resistance. I meant to say that before, but I didn't. His, his accuracy, he doesn't really need. Resistance is the way to go, in my opinion. But going back to the Relic here, Restrict is an extremely powerful debuff. It nukes their defense and resistance, making them extremely vulnerable to not only himself, but to the enemy, to, to your allies as well. And the cool thing about this one is that it does ignore resistance, meaning that you don't have to worry about that as long as they don't have immunity. All you have to do is make sure the enemy does have a debuff, and this ability is ready to rock. However, we have even more options, two of which actually came from the summer festival event that recently ended. The first one is Burning Net. This is another chaos one, kind of a subtle tease that Azula in the hopefully near future is going to be a chaos character. Burning Net here has a 60% chance to inflict stun for one turn on the target enemy if a rank two element or higher is present when the caster attacks on their turn. Now, this is very good However, I am going to make a note that the stun does not say it ignores resistance. So if you have to choose between Burning Net and the Sheer Shoe Darts, you might want to go for the Sheer Shoe Darts unless you are building him with accuracy. You also do have to make sure that somebody somewhere is inflicting that rank 2 element. So just kind of, it, it has some more, more stingy requirements in order to get that stun. However, we have one more from the Summer Festival that I do want to talk about here, and it very well might be his best four-star option. And that is the Beach Umbrella, usable by any Fire Nation character. This is also meant to be a tease for, hopefully, May, coming in the future. This one is interesting. Increase turn bar and permanently increase the attack stat of all allies by 20% when any character on the field is defeated, excluding the caster. This thing's kind of nuts, actually. I'm, I don't know. I think I've, I've seen in Arena, people have kind of started to notice how good this thing is. Whenever you put somebody down, the whole team will get turn bar and the increased attack permanently. Even if one of your allies die, everybody else is going to get some buffs. This Beach Umbrella is fantastic, and if you're using it for Zhao, remember, the whole point is you want to get kills. The first time you get a kill, not only would you get turn meter, which means that he'll be, well, he'll get even closer to using another attack, but the increased attack is nothing to sneeze at. I have, it's funny, this is the one, one of the few relics I've seen where it looks like it was almost built to only have one in existence. This could get a little nutty if they ever created, um, if they ever gave this away free to play, like in the summon shop later, like they kind of tend to do with event relics. Because I can just imagine a full team of Fire Nation characters using the beach umbrella. Do I even need to explain how nutty that could get? That could get interesting, but that's neither here nor there. We only have the one available right now. Maybe one day because. This relic in and of itself is an S-tier relic and fits perfectly with Moonslayer Zhao's playstyle.
But that is all we have for today. Like I said, Moonslayer Zhao, even at skill, even at skill level one, is fantastic. The only reason you would even need to really worry about cranking him up is if you just want him to do as much damage as possible, which is absolutely a valid reason, by the way. Or if you do want him to be used in your defensive arena teams, because he absolutely works. If he puts down one enemy and he's at that, that skill level six, Four turns of Red Moon is hard to shake. So a truly fantastic character. If you haven't already and you're already and you're on the fence about the Spirits Call banner, between Yu Wei and Zhao, you cannot go wrong. But that is all we have for today. Um, hopefully, very soon we will have some new powerful opponents. If I were to take a guess, I'd say it'd be a double banner of the two Fire Nation brothers added in the Imprisoned story which would make them our very first Peace Chaos powerful opponents, and also our first powerful opponent banner that has two characters. That scares me a little bit. However, maybe maybe it'll be free to play friendly still. Maybe they'll get, do you think they'd drop two characters on just 10 pulls? I hope so, I, I hope so, but we shall see. That's neither here nor there, but we will know soon enough. So that is all for today. We shall see you next time. Have a good one.